Well, listen, I think uh, Manziel is such a huge question mark. I don't think anybody's expecting him to be the starter. So, but you know, the main thing for him is what the Browns have expressed. You want his well-being to be first and foremost. I mean, you know, we're talking about, you know, somebody's life here. And anybody who's had anybody in their family who's gone through you know, the rehab and, and, and some of the deep-rooted issues that I think Mike Pettin, when he said those words, you, you kind of sit back and say, okay, you know, this is something. You know, but if he, if he deals with those things, then he'll be in the mix. Then it's a matter of do, who do you get as the bridge guy to whether Johnny is ready or not or whether you get another quarterback. And, or, you know, and it could be that all of a sudden they fall in love with one of the two quarterbacks that you know, doesn't go number one, whether it's Jameis Winston or Marcus Mariota. And do you make a move if that person has got you convicted that he can be, and I'll use this phrase because I've heard it before, a top 15 quarterback eventually in this league. They don't walk into this league as a top 15 quarterback unless you're Andrew Luck. And so uh, – you know, I think that I wouldn't totally rule that out. And then it's just a matter of, you know, who do you want for that bridge guy? Is it Brian Hoyer? You know, with Brian, you know what you get. The, the ceiling's a bit, you know, not great, but won some good football games. Uh, and then, you know, who who are the other guys? Mark Sanchez, you know. It, it, but that would almost be, you know, making a commitment in that area. So, I, I listen, it's a question that you're asking, and it's an answer I don't have. When you look at these top two guys, uh, Jameis Winston, Marcus Mariota, and the Browns do have those two first-round picks. Uh, they probably have to give up more than that if they wanted to move up. Do you think either of those guys is worth the price it might cost? Maybe a, an RG3 type of price, like what the the Redskins paid. No, I don't think I don't think you can do that. I don't think these guys are those type of guys for sure. There's a projection on both guys. Everybody wants to say Jameis is more pro-ready. Well, you know, he also has decision-making supposed to be a vital thing, and you can see some bad decisions as he plays. But the quarterbacks. Listen, they're 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 projects. Even the best ones are projects. Uh, and I'll, I'll, like I say, there's an exception to the rule once in a while. But to me, it's like if one of them you know, say, let's just say Winston goes number one. Now all of a sudden, your job is to try to get into the top five to grab Mariota. You know, Mariota's hands were bigger than people thought. I think it's important that whoever plays in Cleveland has good size hands. And uh, because you do, you deal with weather, you deal with elements. Last year, we actually had a mild winter. We can't count on another mild. When I say winter, I'm talking about December. I'm not talking about February because obviously it's hit us. But, uh, you know, so you, so to me, you would sit there and say, okay, what's it going to take to get into the top five? You know, where's that slot? And, you know, it's not going to be an RG3 type of trade and shouldn't be. Uh, now, I know a lot of Browns fans who are keeping eyes on, their eyes on guys like Bryce Petty, uh, Brett Hundley. You know, what do you think of those guys, especially a guy like Petty who's coming out of that, that sort of, I don't know if I want to call it gimmicky, but that strange Baylor system? Yeah, no, I mean, listen, all these guys are going to have a little, an adjustment anyway, but it's, and Bryce himself will tell you, and, and by the way, he's one of those guys that when you meet, you will, you will fall in love with him. Yeah. You know, he's just one of those guys who's going to light up a room. He's smart. He's dedicated. And it's like he told me uh, a couple of days ago, we were talking on the phone, and he said, hey, listen, he says, I can only drive the car that's given to me. And he, and, he, and he says he has no regrets. So that if he had to do it all over again, he would still go to Baylor because he had, you know, a lot of success, had a lot of fun with the Coach Bryles there. Uh, but he's, you know, when you look at him, you say, man, that's, that guy's a stud. Now, you know, he's still, he's still a project, and he's projected into it. And we don't allow for these learning curves anymore. And part of the problem is whether it's media-based, whether it's fan-based, uh, it's you know, or whether it's you got to convince your owner, uh, you know, of it. But the whole former NFL used to be that Aaron Rodgers actually could be drafted by the Green Bay Packers and sit for two or three years, even though he probably could have played earlier than that. Uh, but you know, we, with all the upheaval and the turnover, uh, we have a quarterback crisis, and I think it's because of instability. And, and we've heard Jimmy Haslam say he wants to create stability, but that stability has not been created yet. Last question. You mentioned Jimmy Haslam and, of course, Mike Pettin, the head coach, Ray Farmer, the GM. We've heard from both of them this week. Uh, do you think the Browns, as they're currently constructed with that structure, Haslam, Farmer, Pettin, do you think they can consistently win with that group? Well, if you're a Browns fan, you hope they can win with that group. I mean, listen, I mean, Ray's had one draft. Uh, you know, Mike Pettin's had one year. Jimmy Haslam's only a couple years into his ownership. Now, those things have to develop, and you forge a philosophy during that period of time. I mean, you know, I'll be honest with you, there's a lot of people around this league who are not Browns fans who are rooting for the Browns to find that stability and winning formula because they're, I think they're important to the National Football League and, and obviously the, the fan base is one of the best in the league. 
Stability and patience have not been a strong suit in Cleveland since they came back in 99. Chris Mortensen of ESPN joining me. Thanks for the time, Chris. All right, you got it,